make a note of this. I do love working with Farrow and Ball. Welcome everybody. You know who I am by now, hopefully. <clears throat> yeah. Right, today you've seen the thumbnail. We're using the, I'm gonna say the cheap sprayer. The cheap sprayer that I picked up from Screwfix, was it last year? Depends when you're watching it. Not that long ago. Now, I bought this for 65 quid. Obviously my video went popular and it seemed to go up by about 20 quid at Screwfix. So obviously a lot of people have bought this off the back of my video. If you have a look there, you'll see it. But anyway, I'm gonna get it out again because I've had a lot of, I don't wanna say feedback, but I've had a lot of people saying and mentioning to me when I've been out and about that you can't spray a quality, more expensive paint with, let's call it a cheap sprayer. Now I want to, I want to prove you wrong. I've got some paint, cause you know I've got multiple paints. Uh, I've got some Farrow and Ball. I'm gonna put Farrow and Ball through this, which is the 800 watt HVLP sprayer. I'm gonna see what it comes up like on Doris the Door. I've got Dave the Door there, and I've got Doris the Door there. Now, Doris the Door was previously done in, well, you can probably just see it. You'll probably go a long way back on the product testing. I've done a Technos Aqua 20 on that door, and I've also done other things. I can't remember what, what was there. Was it PU satin? I've got a feeling it's PU satin on that side. Now, this has been a w number of weeks since I've actually done that video. That's all hard, and currently it's just had a, a fine Merca gold flex sand down just to give it a bit of a key. Now, I don't know if you've seen, I've got a little bit of a banner that comes up in the top corner saying paid promotion. It, I'm not paid by anybody. I've started to get the paid promotions coming through, and if you're watching this video, you might already know from other ones. I've gone as an associate, Amazon associate, yeah, whatever you want to call it, member, which if I just give some links down below to some of the products that I'm using that are on Amazon, if you actually purchase them through the links, I get a tiny commission. Now I want as many commissions as I possibly can because the more commissions I can get from selling, well, I'm not selling it, but <laughs> Amazon give me a little bit of a commission from stuff being sold via Amazon, the quicker I can get that 911. We will see, um, but no. I'm not paid by anybody. I've got my own stuff, I purchase my own stuff. And I'll tell you if I get things that are sent to me because I'd, I'd like some of the other, other people that are on um, Instagram, um, Facebook and YouTube. You sometimes get stuff sent to you and as a decorating firm, we do get stuff sent to us anyway to try out. But no, so if you've seen a paid promotion in the corner, I'm not paid for this video. Screwfix haven't paid me for anything. I purchased that. And as I'm standing here in the middle of 2023, my personal accounts have gone in and I've had to obviously declare what I've been buying so I can offset my tax. Yeah, that's sort of by the way. Right, right so we're gonna go far and ball on this. I'm gonna to prove to you that we can spray far and ball on it. I'm gonna do it properly. I've got a mid-tones undercoat. I've got a mid-tones undercoat and then we'll be going over with, uh, I think I've got Perbex stone in modern eggshell. So um, bear with me, I don't wanna bore you um, going through all this. Let's try and keep it short and sweet. Never. Right, see you later. Let me get my paint set up. Right, I've got my paint out and um, this is actually quite an easy HVLP to set up. You just connect the hose to the machine, connect the, um, other end of the hose to the gun, put your paint in the pot, and then um, away you go. Watch that video in the corner. But I know that this paint is too thick to spray. Now, if I'd got my proper QT5, stage five HVLP, I've got a 1.5 needle set and a 1.8 needle set. Now, the bigger the needle set, the number, the thicker the paint can go through the machine. Now with this setup, I've currently got a 1.8 on the end. That's the orifice on that, that's the hole. You know what I've told you about orifice and sizes, but it also comes with a 2.5. So that would be ideal, because this machine will spray emulsion, 
if you want to mist coat with it, you can do. It would spray emulsion, so 2.5 would be ideal, but you probably still have to thin down your paint to make sure it sprays nicely. Now I'm spraying a, a finished, a finished paint, the undercoat for woodwork. I'm going for the 1.8, but I still know that this paint in there, let's just put the gun down. I still know that this paint in here is too thick for me to spray. And I'm going through, through the 1.8. So what I'm going to do, I've just got some water, I'm just going to tip a bit of water in and I can tell because my skills, my skills mean I know how much thinning I need to do to get that to spray right. So all I've done is mixed it, well I'm mixing it while I'm talking to you, I'm mixing it and I like to see it run off the end of the mixing stick into the paint. I don't know whether I can see, you can probably see it on other videos I've done. So it actually runs straight back in without folding and sitting on the top of the surface. And I'm looking, and that's not looking bad at all. So if you can just kind of angle that down, so you can see. So as I mix that, I don't want to get it all over myself. As I mix that, that runs straight into the paint and it's not sitting on the surface. That's usually my rule, rule of thumb. Nothing technical with it. So I'm quite happy with that. I'm just gonna get the machine set up, make sure it's spraying through, and then um, we can have a look at spraying this door. But that is the, well, can you see that? That's the two, uh, yeah, we can get it. That's the 2.5 orifice, which you would probably use more for Thicker paints, i.e. your emulsions, but still thin it. Right, catch you in a second. Right, got me pot underneath, it's all rigged up. Again, watch that video, it explains about this a bit better. But um, you can move it around this way, right-handed. You can move the spray fan pattern. So if I'm in that position, it will give me a flat spray that way. If I move it to that position, give me a vertical. So I've got horizontal and a vertical. And I believe on the top, you've got your fan width. Now you've got a narrow, you've got a wide, that's all on the top. And I think it's in the middle, gives you virtually a, a spot. We're not looking at a spot, we want a wide fan pattern. And um, the regulator on this for paint flow is that little knobby thing there. Tighten it one way, tighten it the other. You'll get the idea. Watch that video. But, if well, let's just show you. If I unscrew that all the way out, it reduces, let's do it for me, reduces how much that needle goes back, which means your paint going through the end. Whereas if I tighten it down, that's tightened down, I've got further to pull it back, which will release more paint through. So it's a bit trial and error. Always have a piece of cardboard or a piece of um, paper on the wall, then you can have a practice. And that's what I'm gonna do now. So I'm just gonna get it going. I'll get my mask out and let's see how we go on. Right, if you have seen this machine before, um, you've got a minimum and a maximum for the airflow control, i.e. the pressure that the air is coming through it. I've actually got this set halfway. I've done a bit of a sample board just in that corner down there. It's spraying fine. You want a little bit of a soft spray edge on the edges. And what I've done, I've dialed it all the way out so I'm not actually putting too much paint on. It feels a little bit thin, but this is the undercoat. I'm not gonna be worried too much as long as I get a nice spray pattern with it. Now, as I've probably told you on previous videos, just remember, the closer you spray, Oh, look at that. The closer you spray to a surface, the closer you spray to a surface, the more paint's gonna build up. The further away, the less paint's gonna go onto the surface, but also you, you risk the chance of it getting blown about. So you want to be roughly, what's that? Probably about eight inches. Try about eight inches, you'll probably get a nice spray pattern on the surface and also distance wise you won't get too much bounce back the other thing to remember is don't go too slow don't go too quick so again it's trial and error you've got to you've got to practice with these things now before anybody jumps oh let's get it connected up 
for anybody jumps on the bandwagon about my mask, I have got my full face mask there and it is available for me to use. But because of this video and I'm only doing doors to the door, I have got just an ordinary filter mask. So I will be using this filter mask just for the purpose of this video. If I was doing a proper job, I've got a proper spray mask. So uh, let's crack on. Press the red button, starts it up. Now, I don't want to mess my hair up. Fits nicely. Never have a beard if you're spraying using a face mask. Do I have to tell you why? Connect, it's as simple as that. Now, I probably would say my paint might be a little bit thin on that. So, next time when I come to, back to the Perbeck Stone, which we'll come back to when it's all dry, uh, I probably will have it a bit thicker. But I have to say, that has not sprayed bad. It looks, I don't know what you can see, probably not. I thought I'd missed because you do a 50 50 overlap, and that was quite a wide spray pattern. So, see how quick I did it. I thought actually I'd got misses. I thought I wasn't getting the 50-50. And what it was is surface tension because the previous paints that I'd done on that Doris the door, I've got more of a sheen. Your surface tension was showing me a little bit of sissing. A little bit of sissing because we went over with a, an undercoat. But actually, it's drying out not too bad. I'm not too worried about that because this is the undercoat. And this is why you do undercoat. So let me get the heater on. I'm gonna wash this kit out and it's quite simple to do. Just tip your paint out, put some water in it and flush that through the gun and you should be ready to go for your next set of paint. So I'm gonna get the heater on, dry that off. And I would say Farron Ball's pretty good. Might be about half an hour. I might be able to get a, a top coat on and show you what it's like with a top coat. So catch you later, alligator. So I'll just show you this while I'm um, just waiting for the door to finish off drying. We're not far off it. Now, when I was spraying the undercoat, I was halfway on the air there. See, minimum, and you've got a maximum. Now, I've got my paint ready, which is the finish, which is, well, actually, it's modern eggshell mixed with 50-50 um, estate eggshell so we've got a, a nice nice finish on that now i've tried it i've not put so much water in it i've actually opened up i don't know what you can see i've actually opened up the paint flow and then dialed it back in just to get the right amount of paint coming through and i've also turned it and i'll show you i'm turning it to three quarters there and that is giving me a nice atomization on the sorry on the needle, i.e., I'll just show you there, on the needle, on the orifice, that with the, well, let's call them the ram horns, is the air coming out and it atomizes just in front and I'm getting a flat fan pattern there. So I've already done a bit of a sample on my card there. I know it sprays nicely. I'm just gonna give it another five minutes before we get 
I've turned it upside down. The it's all dry at the top. Got the blower heater on it. Um, before we get a, a first of the top coat, but three quarters seems fine for the air atomization pressure, and um, the paint mix is nice. I've not thinned it too much on this one. So um, let's see how we go on the on off buttons there. Right, I'm ready to go again. And as I said, with that heater on, Farron Ball's great. It dries ever so quick, and particularly when spraying. So I would say that's probably been about half an hour to 40 minutes. I've come back to it. I've just given it a fine nib down with the Merkur Gold Flex again. And what I'll do, I'll just go over that surface now, just with a tack rag, just get any last little bits of dust off, you see. And um, for those of you that don't know, this is when you use a tack rag in between layers of paint, nibbing down in between. You don't need to be tack ragging down surfaces that are bare timbers after burning off or anything, use a duster brush. Then you get your, your primers on, then you nip down your primer, then you can start dusting off and then building up with your paints and it's your final last coats that's when you use a tack rag. So that's that's what tack rags are for. When I was doing my decorative treatments courses, um, also it's in between layers of varnish. So that's why I use a tack rag. So we're good to go. What I'm gonna do now is start top to bottom, but I'm gonna go horizontal instead of vertical because I'm gonna give two coats of top coat. Now, that first mid-tones undercoat was a little bit thin. I had a little bit of sissing because of the surface tension of the, oh, I think it was, I'm sure it was PU satin that he used. So I've got a little bit of sissing showing. Not to worry, not to worry at all because the undercoat is my base for my top coats and I'm giving it two top coats. So I'm gonna crack on now because I wanna get it done, I wanna get, Heat going. I don't want to finish it tonight. Let it dry. So bear with the noise. Not much overspray with that, it's nice. Um, I've got horizontal, made sure I've done my 50 50 overlap, and I've got my ring light just at the side. Can you see? So it's actually shining across that surface, and I can see that I'm keeping a wet edge, overlapping a wet edge, and I'm not missing anything. So I'm going to go again. You've probably said, seen me, I've not done the edges. I ran a brush down those just to neaten them all up. I will catch those on um, the second coat of the top coat. So that. I'm liking. This is a 50-50 mix between modern eggshell and estate eggshell. So I'm not going to have the full sheen of, oh, modern eggshell is about 40%. Not sure off top of me, I can't remember. But that's going to be a nice finish when it's dried. What I'm going to do, get my heater on, mix a little bit more paint up. And when that's dry, I'm going to go top to bottom and let's have a look at it when it's fully dried. Do you know what? Make a note of this. I do love working with Farrow and Ball. This stuff, particularly when spraying, 
dry as a dream. I mean, this is probably since I last did it. I don't know, half an hour. I know I've had a blow heat on it, but when you're spraying, you can get two, three coats on in a day like I've done today. Now, well, I've not been a day, have I? Not been a day. So all I've done, I've had my blow reach on it and it's dried, it's lovely. It feels that finish, I know it's a 50-50 mix between a modern and an estate eggshell, but it is a lovely, lovely sheen to that. So don't forget, you can mix your farron balls. So if you want to do a mix of the gloss, the satin, the, um, the flatter eggshell, you can do. So you've got um, estate, you've got modern, and you've got gloss, and don't forget there's the flats now. So you can mix and match if you want. I've nibbed it down, tack ragged it, so I'm good to go, and I'm gonna press my button, get spraying, I'm gonna to go top to bottom, I'll bring the sides in this time round, and then I'll leave it, get it dried, and we'll just have a little bit of a conclusion on how that's looking. But so far, so good. With a 65 to stroke 80 quid sprayer, I am spraying 70 quid's worth of Farron Ball modern eggshell. Because it's about 70 quid, isn't it? Two and a half litres tin. Just add it to the job. The price of the job. Simple as that, mother. I've made sure that there's a wet edge there. I'm not missing anything. It looks, you'll again, just have to trust me on this one. It looks a little bit pimply. That's your sprayer, spraying it on, atomizing. But when that dries, yeah, when that dries, that'll flow out nicely. So that's what you want. A little, a little bit of splatter, but not splatter that it's thick and it's gonna dry textured. So that's why you just ease that paint slightly. This top coat for the two top coats, I did, well, keep it quite thick, but I did put a splash of water into it so it sprayed nicely. I dialed down the um, regulator for how much paint was going on, so I wasn't gonna to apply too much while I was spraying, but do you know what? Primer, stroke undercoat, two top coats, jobs are good, and how long's it been? If you're actually doing this on a job or doing it at home because you're a DIYer, you spray in a door, I'll say within minutes, get the heaters on, dry it off within half an hour to an hour, you can come back to it. So within the morning, you could probably get your doors finished. If you've got multiple doors, look how quick you could be getting multiple doors done and then coming back to the first one. So um, let's just give it a quarter of an hour, let's get it dried off, and we'll just do a quick recap. So there we have it, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls. That, let's call it 80 quid sprayer. Screw fix 80 quid square. No, I can't even say that. The Erbauer, the 800 watt HVLP sprayer from Screw Fix has sprayed Farrow and Ball, no problem. Now, I've just been out and, well, been out, <laughs> been inside the house and cleaned out, left the utility room a right mess. But I've cleaned out the sprayer dead easy. I just flush water through it, get a toothbrush around any of the um, threads and bits and pieces. With it being plastic, it's nice because if there is any little bits of paint on it, you can just easily scrape them off. Bit of warm water. 
Now, what I said to you before I finished um, that final top coat, you get a little bit of a pimple with spraying that hopefully flows out. Now, if your paint's too thick, that pimple will still stay on that surface. If you've not got en enough air atomization, i.e. you've not turned that dial up enough to get the atomization through the gun, through the, the end of the air cap, you can also get a bit of pimpling coming. Now, what's good with this two coating system, you can do your first coat and think, oh, I'm not too happy with that. You can alter things. So if you found that you were getting a little bit pimply, either thin your paint or just turn your air pressure up. Now I was on, what, three quarters. You could turn it up a little bit more to nearly full if you felt that your paint needed it. But a bit of trial and error, you'll get a nice finish. And this, I mean, other than this door's got loads of paint on it, is actually looking quite nice. Try and get you in there. Yeah, you got me. Let's go back a bit. It's actually looking quite nice. This is a 50-50 mix, I've told you that. And it's dry. And two coats over Farron Ball's mid-tones undercoat. That Purbeck stone, which is Purbeck stone. Purbeck stone's lovely. A lot of people go wrong with Farron Ball because they try and skimp and save money not using the correct undercoats and then the two top coat finishes. Now, for what it is, the price of labor, price of materials, do it properly. Because I've used a cheap sprayer on this, as you know, and I'm quite happy with that. That's a nice finish, you can just see it. Yeah, nice bit of a sheen. So, can you do it? Of course you can. You can spray quality paints. Future videos, I'll try something else with a cheap sprayer and see how we go. But if you're looking for a sprayer to get into a bit of spraying, you can't go wrong with Look at it, 85 quid, spraying doors. How good's the finish? Very adequate. Of course, this isn't a thousand pound sprayer like I've got a QT5. So it will get you into it. And once you get the bug and the buzz for spraying, you'll want to spend a bit more and have a little bit more control and a bit more power. But for now, that is well adequate. If you've got staircase spindles and bits and pieces like that you need to do, can't go wrong with that. So. Thanks for listening. Watch the videos at the end and I'll see you on the next one.